Here we're going to be looking at bad debt or uncollectible debt based on receivables here and we're going to be setting up and using an aging schedule here to determine the bad debt or the uncollectible debt. And we're going to be looking at our accounts receivable and we're going to be determining the probability of the accounts receivable collection based on estimates here. And you can either do it as a percentage of sales or a percentage of receivables. And in this case we're going to do it as a percentage of receivables and that's without identifying any specific accounts here and it's going to be where we're using past experience you can estimate it uh, either as a composite rate or set up this aging schedule that we're going to set up here and for the accounts receivable to estimate either the uncollectibles based on uh, various age categories here for the probability of the of the collection here for this aging schedule. So let's look and we're going to also be using at our, the allowance method here and we're going to see that when we make our, our looking at the balance sheet here and on the income statement and how we record our accounts receivable and our allowance for our accounts receivable and it's going to be based here on the total outstanding receivables. So let's look at our aging schedule here. So for an aging schedule you have your customers identified here and then you have your balance for your customers and we're just going to look at the year-end balance here on their accounts receivable that are sitting here and then you classify these by the number of days that they're uh, outstanding for the accounts receivable for each of the customers so you, in this case under 60 days 60 90 days a 91 to 120 and then over 120 days here and then what we would do is we just total the amounts for each of these uh, date classifications here. So for each classification here, we would just total off of our amounts here and come up with a subtotal. In this case, we got a total um, accounts receivable for our, in this case, our four customers here at $273,500. And then they're divided up here depending on the age schedule here. Then we take each of, uh, then we have set up our summary accounts. We just take these uh, accounts receivable here uh, for, take the amount that we have here for each of them. And then we have them for the, again the under the 60 days, 230,000, and then 60 to 90 days, so forth. Here we set those up, and then we'd have a percent of uncollectible, the percentage of those receivables here for each of the date classifications that are un, under uncollectible. So under 60 days, we have 4% here, and then it progresses up here. So for over 120 days, we estimate that 25% of these receivables aren't be, being collected here. So to determine our, the amount here of the uncollectible or the bad debt, you just take the amount here times the percent of the uh, receivable that's uncollectible here, and then you come up with the amount that would be uncollectible. And then just total those amounts here, and then you're going to get your year-end balance or the year end of your balance here for the doubtful accounts and this we, we determined to be eighteen thousand eight hundred and twenty five dollars and again this is based on the percentage of receivables so let's go up here and look at how we'd record this on our balance sheet and our income statement using the uh, uh, allowance method here. So if, on our balance sheet we're going to have our accounts receivable here and we have a debit amount, amount here of $273,500 that came off our aging schedule here. And then we have an allowance for doubtful accounts here. That's the uh, based on the percentage of receivable. That's the amount that we're saying uh, that will not be collected. We're estimating amount here that won't be collected and that's going to also come off our aging schedule. And uh, that's a contra account here to our accounts receivable. That reduces our accounts receivable. And then on our income statement we'll have some sales here, sales returns and allowance. And then we get down to what we're really calculating here. It's bad debt expense here on the uh, income statement. And again, that's going to be based on the percent here of receivables. So let's go and concentrate on this allowance for doubtful, or doubtful accounts here or bad debt account here for our receivables that we're estimating. Now, in our case here, uh, we have a thousand dollars credit amount here sitting in this allowance account here and that's going to be a key number that we have to look at here and we have to determine what our year-end balance is going to be here well we know what our year-end balance is coming off our aging schedule and that has to be eighteen thousand eight hundred and twenty five dollars that we're estimating that we're not going to be able to uh, 
re recover here in our accounts receivable or as bad debt. So we have a two-step process here. We've got first with the desired balance in this allowance account here off our aging schedule. We determine that should be $18,825. And now we have to determine the amount that we have to either uh, we have to uh, include in our allowance account here to come up with this $18,825 based on our beginning balance here of $1,000. So it's required to bring our allowance account up to the desired balance of $18,825. All we would take is our $18,825 less the existing balance here that we would have. In this case, it's $1,000. And we come up with here with $17,825. You can see why it's important here that we cannot ignore the existing balance here in this allowance account. We have to include it when we're uh, calcul or when we have to determine here. We determine that the total amount here should be eighteen thousand eight hundred and twenty-five dollars off our uh, aging schedule, but we have to include this thousand dollars here when determining the amount of bad debt expense that we're going to have for the period here. So we determine uh, we've got the seventeen thousand eight hundred and twenty-five dollars here, and uh, that was a credit here to our allowance for doubtful accounts, and then the debit amount here would go to the bad debt expense here for eight, seventeen thousand. $825. So you can see why that was uh, key here where we had to include or had to uh, not ignore this existing balance here of $1,000 and then we knew off our aging schedule what allowance we required for the period. So with this allowance method here it reports the receivables on the balance sheet at the net realizable value. That's the amount that uh, would be received here in cash here. So what would our net realizable balance value be here for the end of the year 1231x1 here? So we have our accounts receivable sitting at $273,500 less our allowance our doubtful account allowance here of $18,825 leaves us with a net realizable value of $254,675. So what we've done here is we've gone through and we've determined our a bad debt expense based on this aging schedule here that we determine for each one of our uh, aging schedule based on our accounts receivable and then we determine that we what the uncollectible percentage would be for each of the accounts receivable based off that aging schedule here and then we went up here to our balance sheet here and we had we determine what our we determine what our accounts receivable is off the aging schedule here and then we had set up this contra account here this allowance account which reduces our accounts receivable based on what we calculated would be uncollectible off that aging schedule. So that's just a summary here on how we'd handle our bad debt based on receivables using an aging schedule.